Hey everybody, today's part one of a video series on creating a machine learning model uh, for predicting quarterback passing yards. So let's get into it. A couple of semi-advanced football analytics that maybe the average football watcher doesn't uh, know about yet. Uh, air yards is how many yards the ball is in the air before it reaches the target. Um, we're going to be using a lot of these in our regression model to predict how many yards the quarterback uh, is passing every game. So you would think that if a quarterback's throwing a lot of air yards, they're airing out the ball, that they would uh, have higher passing yards. Um, that's just logical, but we'll see if it's actually true. Uh, next is EPA. This is expected points added. So uh, the best way to understand this is probably example, which I have here. Um, let's say that the offense is a first and 10 at the 20 yard line and they complete a 20 yard pass. The EPA value of that, or how many points they've expected to add by just throwing the ball 20 yards is 1.36. So defensive EPA is just the inverse of that. Um, so negative 1.36. And, you know, something to think about is, you know, a fourth and one probably has a, a converted fourth and one probably has a higher EPA than like this 20 yard pass simply because the fourth and one has is a higher leverage situation. If the offense doesn't convert there, they lose the ball. So that would be a huge hit to them. Um, so EPA, huge metric in the advanced football analytics sphere. Uh, CPOE stands for completion percentage over expected. Uh, there's a lot that goes into this, things like air yards, field position, uh, whether the quarterback was hit on the play, even things like uh, if there's a roof over the head of the quarterback when they're in the stadium where they're playing. Um, just the way to think about CPOE is if the quarterback has a high CPOE or above zero CPOE, they're making it easier to, for their receivers to catch the ball. They're, they're creating space and making difficult throws. Uh, on the inverse of that would be a negative CPOE where the quarterback's missing open throws or they're not making it easy enough for their receivers to catch the ball. So this is a quarterback metric as much as it may sound like a receiver metric. So here's a look at our model. Um, you know, we have uh, passer features, so quarterback features, as well as defensive features, which would just be the opposite. So, uh, for example, we got completion percentage, which is the quarterback's individual completion percentage, and then whatever defense they're facing, their allowed completion percentage. And you can look all uh, look at all these features. You know, I'll post the the notebook that we're using on GitHub and the link to that. So. If you want to take this and maybe add other features or take some out and see how it affects the model, you know, be my guest. Um, so we're going to be taking all these statistics up here and we're going to be using exponentially weighted moving average. So uh, I'll explain what that is on the next slide, but basically it's a, a dynamic window to look back and um, you know see the relative statistical pattern of these metrics. Um, and we're going to be using this exponentially weighted moving average to predict passing yards. Uh, a couple of independent features, things that won't be converted to EWMA, would be uh, what roof, like if, they, uh, if there's a retractable roof on the field, uh, in the stadium, and what kind of field surface, if it's AstroTurf or real grass. These may not affect the passing yards, but it's it'll be interesting to see. Um, and I should mention this EWMA idea I got from... Uh, a guy named Ben Dominguez. Uh, he wrote a post on open source football, so I'll link the, the post to that as well. So why do we want to use EWMA? <clears throat> uh, I think it can be summed up in this quote here, any given Sunday. Football is a very noisy sport um, in terms of football data and, and metrics and stuff. Uh, the worst quarterback in the league can you know throw for five touchdowns and 400 yards on the same uh, idea there. The best quarterback in the league might you know, have a bad day and throw up four interceptions. So uh, we don't, we want to get in a, you know, like look back and have a moving average of all these metrics, like, you know, air yards and stuff like that. But we don't want to overweight things in the past too much. We want to like, you know, look more closely at what just happened. So if a quarterback uh, is trending in a certain direction, we can, we can catch on to that with the exponentially weighted moving average. So here's the formula for it. Um, I think the only thing really to note that's important here is this alpha value. So a higher alpha value means the older games will be will decay more. So if we had a very high alpha value, 
the first three, four games um, in our window, looking back 10 games, they may not matter at all compared to what the quarterback's doing in the last one, two games. So <clears throat> this is something we can mess with and see how it affects the um, accuracy of our model. But let's get into the code here. So uh, the main package we're going to be using to get NFL data is called NFL Data Pi. Um, the quantity of data in this package and what you can get from it is, is extremely impressive. So I encourage you to look through the documentation there. But I think their play-by-play -play data goes all the way back to like 1999 or something, which is very impressive. You have this plenty of data to uh, use for our regression model. Um, let me change this real quick. This is passer data. So uh, a couple other basics here. We're going to use pandas and NumPy. Uh, for visualization, we'll use matplotlib and Seaborn. And then the machine learning tools we'll need are LightGBM uh, and SKLearn. And we're also going to use PyCaret, in another, but I'll explain that in more detail in another video. Um, <clears throat> here's the columns I showed you on this page. These are our features that we're feeding into the model. Uh, let's go back. So. Uh, we're going to use the uh, NFL Data Pi, and by the way, I'm um, I'm writing NFL Data Pi as NFL, just so it's easier to type out. But we're going to use this import PBP data to get play-by-play -play data from 2001 all the way to 2021. Again, this uh, if you didn't know, this range function stops uh, one before the last number you give it. So this is 2001 to 2021. Um, I'm saving 2022, which is the current year. Uh, because I'd like to test on that and see how this model will perform um, on recent games. So we're feeding in this columns uh, parameter so that it knows which columns to load in. There's something like 400, 500 columns. So I recommend if you're using this, specify which columns you want first. Otherwise, it might take a while to load. Um, something kind of strange here. Uh, even if you specify the columns, sometimes it still loads extra columns. So again, I'm just reassigning this variable to uh, <clears throat> include only the columns we care about here. And then we're filtering down to just passing plays. Uh, maybe if you wanted to mess with this, you could try and include running plays and see you know, if a team runs the ball a lot, um, maybe they their quarterback has fewer passing yards, something like that. But um, a pass attempts is one of our features here. So I think that kind of uh, encompasses, you know, what we're trying here, what we're trying to do here. I don't think running data is necessary. Um, and then we're just gonna drop the play type column since we know everything's a passing play. Uh, here's a look at our data. You could see, you know, I don't know who Jay Garcia was, but he looks like he was playing for the 49ers in 2001, all the way up to the Super Bowl last year with Joe Burrow. Um, here's our complete data set, it's about half a million rows, so a lot of data. And yes, there we go. So uh, first step in machine learning after you load the data is pre-processing. This is probably the most important step. Um, it's probably the step you'll revisit the most. Uh, so what we're doing is we're taking our passer data, uh, data frame, and we're gonna group it by the quarterback or the passer player name. This will include even, you know, if a receiver or something passes the ball once in their whole career, they'll be included in that. But uh, we'll handle for outliers and stuff like that. You know, maybe we want to get rid of passers that throw the ball once or twice in their whole career, just because that may influence um, how our model views the data. But anyway, we're grouping by the quarterback and how they did in a given week and in within a given year. Um, and this, this aggregation feature, uh, sorry, function, aggregation function is pretty nice. It allows you to group each column differently. So obviously for the possession team, the throwing team, we don't really, uh, a mean or a, a sum doesn't make sense. So we just want to use, take the first one, adding it all together doesn't make much sense. But for air yards, we want to know how many total air yards they're throwing in a given game. Same with yards after the catch. Most of these we're summing up. Uh, for CPOE, we just want to take the average since this is a percentage, adding percentages together doesn't make much sense. So. There we go, that's how we're aggregating all this data together. And when we print it out again, we get down to 13,000 rows. So this is, each row represents a quarterback's, uh, or I should say a passer, since it'll include anyone that's passed the ball. It, uh, 13,000 um, weeks within a year 
of a, a quarterback's uh, a quarterback's game. So, you know, we can see <laughs> someone like Zach Wilson often has negative EPA throughout uh, a full game, other than Week 17 last year. Um, you know, we can see how many inter interceptions they've had, how many times they were hit in the game. Uh, important stuff here. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of feature engineering, which is a machine learning term for just using math to create new features. Uh, what we're going to use, the first feature we're going to create is completion percentage. Somewhat self-explanatory. We're just going to take complete passes uh, and divide that by total passes. And then we're going to take, uh, we're going to get a pass attempts column, which is just complete passes plus incomplete passes. So we're going to drop those other um, columns that we don't need, the complete pass and incomplete pass column, since we uh, have what we need from them. So uh, another thing I wanted to uh, note is maybe a passer, a quarterback, will throw more yards if they're at home. Often teams have home field advantage. They perform better at home. So that probably translates to passing yards. So what we're doing here is creating a home flag column. If the passers, uh, if the passer is a possession team equals home team, then they're obviously at home. So we're going to drop the home and away team columns now. And I like to, you know, reorder the columns based on importance in my mind. So um, here's our target column. It's in the data set, passing yards. Uh, there we go. So you can see the completion percentage for each game, things like that, uh, number of pass attempts. These are obviously, you know, I think Antoine Randall L right here was a receiver, so obviously it was a trick play of some kind. He only threw the ball uh, once in two different games. But, you know, for things like uh, Zach Wilson here, you could see his completion percentage down here. <clears throat> All right, this is where the magic comes in. We are calculating our exponentially weighted moving average. So <clears throat> we're creating a new column for each of our, you know, uh, numeric columns which just has the suffix EWMA, exponentially weighted moving average. So we're grouping by the, uh, the quarterback, the, the passer, and we're going to take the metric, in this case, completion percentage, and use a transform um, function. And within that transform, we're going to use a lambda function, which is our EWM. So what we're putting in here is um, this means we're spanning back 10 games. So we're looking back 10 games, and um, <clears throat> every every – uh, every row needs a minimum of one. So if, if somebody doesn't have any passing yards, they won't pay, uh, appear here. But we're looking back 10, 10 games and exponentially weighting. So it the uh, more recent games are weighted more heavily. So we're doing that for each column. And we can see here, let's look. Uh, you know, you can see this is Zach Wilson again, since he's just alphabetically last. But, um, you know, his quarterback hit how many times he was hit in a game exponentially weighted. You can see it's going up um, and then it starts to go back down and then it goes back up. So it doesn't swing super high. Uh, but if there's a, uh, you know, serious noise, you know, some change in the offensive line or something that'll pick up here uh, over time, but it's not heavily weighting any one game too much. It's just kind of a nice way to get an idea of um, where numbers are trending. Uh, we're going to drop the, uh, the columns that aren't exponentially weighted moving averages and then print it out again. And this is pretty much our final um, data frame for our quarterbacks, at least. Uh, and I'm going to kind of breeze through the defense here. Really, all we're doing is the other side of the ball. So we're getting rid of the passer player name. Um, we're just going to use defensive team instead. So we can see, you know, we're doing the same thing here. We're aggregating by similar methods. And then, you know, adding our features. Uh, is a defensive team at home? If so, they might perform better. Dropping some columns, reordering, uh, and then exponentially weighting everything. Uh, let's keep going. Yeah, here we go. Here's our final defensive uh, data frame. So, for example, let's look at Washington in 2005. You know, we could see they're averaging two sacks a game or something like that. So um, in the next video, we're going to, oh, you know what? Let's talk about uh, merging these together. So this is our final data set. We're just joining on 
the defensive team. So in our passer data, we had which team they're facing off against. So we're going to join on that team, the season, so what year they played, the week, uh, and then roof and surface. The only reason we're doing that is because, um, you know, these will be the same for both sides of the, uh, the data frame. So we just want to merge those columns together so that we don't have two other columns. Um, and then we're going to add a suffix so we know if this is coming from the passer side or the defensive side. So this is our final data frame. This is most likely we might do a little more um, data analysis, exploratory data analysis in the next one and see if we can optimize this more. But this is probably our final data frame here and what we're going to use to feed into the model. So um, hopefully you guys liked it. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I'll, I'll post the GitHub link if anyone wants to look at, at, uh, at the code here ahead of time. So thanks.